we introduced or maybe reintroduced in the videos on simple linear regression the idea that if I had n observations of a predictor x and I was trying to explain or predict uh, the response variable or n observations of the response variable y, then this simple linear regression model yi is intercept alpha plus slope term beta times xi plus some residual error epsilon i would be my model and that I would estimate the values of the intercept and the slope by the intercept term would be alpha hat is the average y minus beta times the average x y bar minus beta x bar and I would estimate that beta with beta hat being this sum of the xi minus x bar times yi minus y bar divided by the sum of the xi minus x bar squared. So if I do this with a set of observations of x, then the expected value of this slope parameter beta hat is just the, well, the x is I've known, I've observed them. So my term on the top with the yi minus y bar just becomes the expected value of yi minus the expected value of y bar. And of course, I can then put the model in that yi is that the expected value of yi, where the expected size of the residual is zero, will give me this alpha plus beta xi. And the expected value of y bar will just be alpha minus beta x bar. So when I start to tidy that up, I can pull the beta term out the front, and I'll be left fairly obviously with beta times, I think you can recognize the top and the bottom of that fraction are identical. So the expected value of the slope estimate beta hat given a sample x will be the true slope beta. Similarly, this is probably a little bit easier to show, but the expected value of the intercept estimate is the true value of the intercept. So what this says is that under ordinary least squares, the slope and the intercept parameters are both unbiased. The other thing to note again is repeating what I said in some of the sections on linear regression. A lot of people will say you have to have certain distributional assumptions for regression models. I haven't made any distributional assumptions here other than residuals with zero expectation. What about the variance of these estimates around the true values? Well, this is a bit messier, but the variance of beta hat for a given sample x it's just the variance of, well, however I'd calculate it. So what I can do is I can then say in the numerator, I've got a y bar times the sum of the xi minus x bars, and that's got to be zero because conditional on knowledge of my sample x, the variance of that should be zero. So Simplifying by removing that term, all I'm left with in the top is the sum of the xi minus x bar um, squared times the variance of the residual. And so the variance of the residual is, well, whatever it is, sigma squared. And I'll still be left with this um, sum in the denominator. Now, that simplification did rely on the fact that I was saying, because of course a variance of a sum is a sum of variances, if and only if they're uncorrelated, if the covariances are zero. So that simplification did rely on a couple of things. It assumed that the residuals were uncorrelated 
and with constant variance. So this is where we start to get distributional assumptions in. If I do ordinary least squares, I will, on average, get the right answer. I will have unbiased estimates for my slope and my intercept. But if I want to say how much variance there is around that estimator, then these nice simplifications do rely on having constant variance, uncorrelated residuals. And similarly, when I work out the variance of the intercept term, it's very similar. But what I'll be left with here is, well, I get another term at the front. <laughs> 